Everybody, welcome back to another episode of Simply Unprofessional. I'm your host, Webby, and joining me tonight, we got Austin. I think I cut out, but if you said Austin, this is Austin. Yep, I did. And I'm Devin. And there we have Devin. (laughs) My co-hostess with the mostest. Devin. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna put you on the spot here for a minute. You don't listen to any of these episodes, (laughs) I'm guessing. Uh, not frequently. If yeah. I have to, usually. But not, so, not really. you probably won't catch this. Uh, last week, me and Edquist recorded an episode. Mm-hmm. And he called you out, son. He I said, wasn't. Oh, shit. He said that he's more recently been on more episodes, so he should be the co-host. And this, this war, I thought, was squashed. <laughs> It is he's, on me. It is on me. He's, Obviously, he's, he's dressed the, it back up. I'm the bigger man. I'm walking away. Um, oh. And oh. to be to be honest, uh, I, I had a lot. I was moving last week. I couldn't do much about it. Um, well, I was moving somebody last week. Um, and the weeks prior to that, uh, you didn't ask me. <laughs> uh, it's not true. I don't recall a message. No, okay. Here's where we you pull just... back. Here's where we pull back the veil a little bit. Okay, <laughs> on SU. When I say last week, that means that this episode is getting released next week, <laughs> and me and Edquist just recorded one last night. We'll see. So, <laughs> anyway, yeah, it was really late at night, and I knew you'd be passed out. But yeah, he took the jab at you. And I was like, oh, I'm going to let him know, because if I don't let him know, he's never going to listen to it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I, pre- I appreciate it. You know why? Because we have that host-co-host bond. That's right. That's so, right. like I said, I'm the bigger man. I'm walking away. Like I said, you know. He's... Does that mean you're letting him have it? Letting him have the co-host spot? Whatever makes him feel better. <laughs> Whatever <laughs> helps him sleep at night. That means you have it only in name, Edquist. Yeah, I mean, you have to you have to get Webby to say it. Whoever gets Webby to say that they're his actual official co-host first has the title. I think he did. I I can no, I can say honestly, I I I don't recall ever saying that you and Edquist weren't co-hosts. I haven't chosen between you two. I don't think I've sided one way or the other. I know the only person I've actually given a legit. Position is Austin. Yeah, Austin is the simply unprofessional on-site reporter slash journalist. Yeah, <laughs> mainly because he, he he conducted an interview once on-site <laughs> without me there, and yes. occasional horse fucker. But yes, I, well, I mean, we, we got someone's got to keep those horses happy. That's all right. I got to say. What he does in his spare time is not our business. Occasional, or our HR department. By occasional, you mean every occasion I give. Oh, oh boy, this happened. Austin, you you would have loved uh, actually last week's episode with me and Ed Chris. We talked about islands, weird islands and stuff. There's one called Sable Island off the coast of Nova Scotia. I'm not going to get super deep into it, but it's known for two things: uh, horses and shipwrecks. There oh, are shipwreck there and just there are no inhabitants on this island. It is protected by Canada uh, Canadian government. Oh, so and there are there. there are over five hundred and fifty <laughs> wild horses roaming on this one island. That's dope. Yeah. I wonder if they like roam together, all of them. All five hundred and fifty. I mean maybe. That would be cool. There there's really no other animals on this island. They just they chill out. Eat, sleep, shit, fuck, <laughs> fuck. 
Hmm. Yeah. What if you took the horse island and put it on the snake island? That'd be bad. Yeah. Be bad. I'd like to There'd see There'd be that. no more horses. That's a lot love, of snakes. Okay. Oh, uh, chaos. Yeah. A lot of snakes. A lot of snakes. A lot of snakes. A lot of nope ropes. A lot of nope ropes. <laughs> yeah, that is my new favorite <laughs> nickname for snakes. <laughs> From now on, anytime I talk about snakes, I'm just going to refer to them as nope ropes. <laughs> oh my god. That's a great. I, I do have a question for you guys. Sure. Shoot. Hey, if, if you could be in any anime in real life, what would it be? <sighs> Devin would know better about this. Now, oh. am I allowed to be a special character? Well, let's say, you, or am I just yeah, some that, random that, town guy? That, that that does change the question. So you would be born into this world, but you'd have to make your way from there. So like, right? But if I chose something, I'm hearing myself real bad through your headset. Shit. Yeah. Also, Webby, Danger Noodle. Danger Noodle's also an option. <laughs> Danger Noodle is, is good too. If if say I chose, um, fuck anime, uh. Like say you chose seven Yugi, deadly, the no, Yu-Gi-Oh world. Say, say I chose Seven Deadly Sins. Okay. Do I get to be some cool, dope ass guy with magical powers like some of those guys? Well, now I've only watched the first three episodes of that. So, do other people besides the Seven Deadly Sins people? Have I mean, there's powers? there's the Seven Deadly Sins. There's the there's the um, knights. There's the demons. There's the knights. There's multiple essentially do they train? Powers. Do they train to get there? or Are they just born with it? Uh... uh Probably a combination of both. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, you would have those same chances, and like you would like if you say, look, I was just making like thinking about we were talking about Yu Gi Oh, so thinking about that, you would be born into the Yu Gi Oh world, but it would be up to you to get your cards and monsters and go and train and do battles. Like mm. that would be up to you. To do I'm gonna let Devin answer this first because I mm-hmm. I don't know many anime. I'm pretty sure I have mine in my head, like the a hundred percent. Wait, uh, Devin, hold on. What's that anime you told me about the last anime episode we did? Something about cooking, and then there's just a, a shit ton of food and boobs. Oh, um, uh, Shokugeki no Soma. Yeah, I'm, I want to be there. Uh, can I be in that world where there's just nothing but f- really good food and boobs? Sure, yeah, that's literally what it is. I mean, and if, if, if I can't control what I am, I'm also going to be in that world. Um, there we go. Because I was thinking, I was just like, if I could control what I am, I was going to go off the top of my head. Uh, and if I want to show the dark side of me, I would pick Tokyo Ghoul, mainly because I just finished watching it. And uh, But if I was the case, I'd want to be a ghoul, which means I eat people. Um, which is... Sidebar, because if you're a human, you just get it. Ate. You're, uh, you're, you're a food source at that point. Um, alternatively, um, uh, was it Toaru? Oh, I forget the words. Toaru Magi. My alternate option would be Berserk. That see, you would die though so fast. No, no, no. Bad. I'd be, I'd be like that. Big... A random bartender. No, I'd be like that. Yeah, I'd be like that rotund bartender who has that ginormous fucking mace that no one else can pick up, and I'd fucking be crushing skulls. I like it. I like it. Yeah, I would pick uh, Toraru Majutsu no Index or a certain magical index. Um, if I could be a citizen of Academy City, that would be fine. Literally, it's an entire city made up of schools, and that would be fine. Psst, listeners, I have no idea what's talking about right now. Just... A certain magical index. You should watch it. I'm throwing it out there. It's, it's Maybe good. for our next anime episode. I'd uh, I'd pick Pokemon. That that's, that is a safe world. The yeah. only w- reason I would pick Pokemon is if I could literally walk up, and we've had this discussion. Just slap Pokemon. I, I, no, I want to walk over and hold my Pokeball thing, and just beat someone else to death with it and steal their Pokeballs. You you can do that. That's what I would do. <laughs> you know what? I'm know. gonna go. Fancy Smancy Old School, this is going to be the ripoff of Pokemon. Um, so there's Pokemon Digimon, that, and there was this, this, then there was this third Shadow series that nobody gave a shit about. Pocket Monsters. Except for me. No, Monster Rancher. Oh, Monster oh, Rancher. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. give a fuck about Monster Rancher. Dude, I love, I played that game. 
Dude, I love Monster Rancher. Dude, yeah. that was one of my favorite games. The one on the PlayStation that, that came on PlayStation, Monster yeah. Rancher 2, you could take discs of other PlayStation games or other CDs, put it in the disc tray, and it would unlock monsters for you. It yeah. was dope. Yes. Now, was now so hold dope. on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pose another question. But uh, first, question about the Pokemon world, Austin. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. All of like the various like very uh, main cast and very uh, main reoccurring cast, how old are they? Uh, I think Ash is like. 12? Ash is ten. He was ten. 10? He's been ten the entire season. Yeah. But okay. somehow, what's his name grew old. Uh, somebody grew up. One of the people he traveled with fucking grew up. Now so he's been ten so, the entire so, time. So most of his friends that he travels with are around the same age. Most of them, I think. That's Rock was. Now, Rock was now what about Team older. Rocket? How old are they? They're adults. I, yeah. adults, I would go. No, actually, no. I think Pokemon I think World. James and Jesse are sixteen, like sixteen, seventeen. I think they're like older teenagers. Never mind, because uh, I can't have good food and boobs in Pokemon World. They're I'm thinking, all, they're I'm all very Hold young. Hold on, Jesse, uh, Pokemon. And then I'd be beating teenagers to death. Uh, I mean, I guess. Well, let's okay let's think about nope. this, though. Uh, uh, nope, she's she's twenty five. Apparently, there you go. Oh, I go. go. I'd I'd be killing. I'd be killing James for. Also, <laughs> also in anime, I don't. I feel like a thirteen year old anime girl is like a pause, pause, pause. Yeah, yeah, don't do finish this. Don't finish. Don't <laughs> go down yeah. this rabbit hole. You are already the. Distractions Media Horsefucker, let's not let's add worse that. labels. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Now, a different question. Because Sailor is, Moon... No, and... no, no, okay. no, we're not doing this. <laughs> no. We're not doing this. <laughs> next this thing, next thing, next thing Devin, next thing Devin, Austin's going to be like, well, you know that Strawberry Shortcake girl? And what? it's like, What? <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Remember those garbage pail kids, Austin? <laughs> Slap them. Uh, okay, so Austin just brought up if we if we could live in a live anime world, which one would it be? Now I'm gonna pose: if you guys could live in a video game world, which would it be? Hmm. Uh, same follow-up question. I have way too many fucking choices for video. No, no, no. Same follow-up question of what would come of me if, like, it would depend on the video game. It would depend on the video game, I suppose. Like, if you chose something like World of Warcraft, then you could be a race that you would want to be, and you could follow that adventuring life and become one of those classes. And all right, my jokey answer is going to be Dead by Daylight because there's no difference in my life right now. I'm, <laughs> Just I'm, I'm, repetitively I'm running, running, running away, away from dying. a dark entity. <laughs> yeah, trying, right. trying, trying to fix the generators, which is a stand-in for my life, only to just get hooked and die. <laughs> You know, yeah, that's you know, that's the which uh, is the only way Feng Min can fix a generator in real life, okay? Is if it was make believe. Yes. Why is that gamer girl able to just know how to fix a fucking generator? Why is anyone in that ever know how to fix a generator? I still think Bill probably could. Bill's probably the only one who's legitimately. I would agree. I would. I would. I would say nose. Like, what's his name? Fucking Bill. What's his name? or, Or Ace, even. Ace, he's a fucking overweight gambler. He doesn't know shit about yeah. Generator he's he's never had to fix a fucking generator. The fu- who's the f- Dwight? Dwight, he he's never he's never done physical labor in his life. No, but he might have like he has the intelligence to know how to tell you. Like he can yeah. he can sit there and yell at you how to fix a generator, but he doesn't know how to fix it. If he had a if he had a blueprint or like an instruction manual, he probably could. Like I literally wish that like I literally wish before you like as an extra thing before you can fix the generator you got to find the blueprints for the generator. Right. Find the blueprint and you're like all right now I can fix it or you can fix it faster with blueprints. I think generator blueprint should be a thing in the game. We're getting off topic. But that's all right. Yeah, anyway. So your your joke answer was dead by daylight. What would what what video game would you really want to live in? Um or video game world, I should say. I'm going to say Halo. I would like to be a Spartan. It'd be fun. Hmm. All right. What about you, Austin? Uh, 
And I can be anything in this? Like, I don't have to... I mean, yeah, for the most part. I mean, you're not going to be, like, you can be as good as, like, the best. main character, I guess, but... Like, no one ever was. That's a, I, I'm thinking Pokemon still, but... Fucking A, you love that Pokemans. Well, I just think it would be really cool to have those monsters all around. and But maybe, like, the Skylanders or something, like the Disney Infinity... That way I could be part of Star Wars. Mm-mm, Avengers. Mm-mm. Actually, no, if you want to do that, Kingdom Hearts, dude. Oh, there it is. Can I be a Keyblade wielder? Sure. Is, is there only one? No, there's a couple. I don't know. I haven't played through all of them. I played through the first one. So any, anybody can just get a Keyblade? Mm-hmm. It's not It's not special to this one There character. is more than one Keyblade Wilder. Keyblade Wilder. Uh, Keyblade Masters. Current list of Keyblade Masters are... No, spoilers. Uh, yeah, you don't, okay. you don't have to say. One, two, say. three. There's six known. Oh. Maybe seven. Maybe. All right. Then maybe Assassin's Creed, then. Because there's a lot of Assassins throughout time. True. All right. I don't know, it's hard to think on the spot. Maybe if I had I like some time. I can do I can we can do a whole episode off this. Yeah, we really could. <laughs> I would probably have to go with I'm Final Fantasy Tactics. I'm I'm torn really between Live, live your life one turn at a time. <laughs> no, I'm torn between either WoW or or honestly Zelda. <laughs> like I want to live in a world where if I kick chickens, a million chickens are going to come after me. Oh, dude, Fable, Fable. I, I would, yeah. I would devise a trap to trap all those chickens, and then and I would so- be the chicken farmer. <laughs> I live in Minecraft. No, I don't like creepers. Yeah, fuck Minecraft. Too, too much shit seems to bother you. And and I'm a night owl. I, I get shit done at night. Like yep. that's not no. Fuck that. Yeah, but I if like you're underground, life. you know, it's hard to die in Minecraft. Sometimes. Not really. Not really. Well, not it's when easy. I, to... Not when you're here, throwing here, buckets here, here, of lava. I'll tell you Christmas what. Trees. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I will be in Minecraft if I can be in permanent creator mode. <laughs> <laughs> and what, can I just have... rule as Minecraft God? Can I be Minecraft God? And I wouldn't be in my... I wouldn't be in like vanilla Minecraft. I'd have to be in modded Minecraft. Game of Thrones. I want to be in the world of Game of Thrones. Oh. I don't want to like go for a throne. I just want to be like have some money and just be left alone. Like, all right, I'm I'm, I'm good. Oh, The Walking Dead would be a fun one to be in. Like, the, I mean, honestly, if you could, if you could just ignore people, the the walkers aren't that bad. Like, right until they the get like a big fuck number. You over. Yeah, unless you yeah. play, unless you play State of Decay, those fucking zombies run. Yeah, fuck those. I hate it, zombies. Top ten zombie apocalypse, like not even top ten. I'm just saying, like if the Resident Evil zombie apocalypse happens, I shoot myself. It's not even worth it. Oh, zombie nah. apocalypse, if, like well, Resident Evil zombies. No, hold I'm, on, I'm done. Hold on. The f- the zombies from the first Resident Evil weren't bad. They were like legit yeah, just zombies. Oh no, I'm talking about like all like encompassing that whole universe, like zombie yeah, crocodiles, no. fucking <laughs> no. nemesis. I'm good. I'm out. Like a regular zombie apocalypse, bring that shit on. Yeah, Nemesis I alone. I don't need. Yeah, I don't, I don't need Nemesis busting through a wall at me with a rocket launcher. It's <laughs> like, what did I do? That was the scariest part. Me and my brothers used to sit in the dark and play uh, that, and I, that I knew that that part was coming. Uh, and my my, you know what? my worst part, the zombie dogs. Tell you what, oh, yeah, if I, I could, if I could be, crows. if I could be any game ever, I'll be in Silent Hill. There you go. Fuck okay. that. <laughs> Fuck that. No. Just, Devin, just I won't let you. Hit. You know what? I'm I'm gonna I'm before you choose that, I'm I'm tackling your ass. We're going down a pipe and we're gonna just live in Mario. <laughs> Fuck it. I'll we're I'll be gonna Luigi. ride around on Yoshi's, different colored I'll be, Yoshi's. I'll be Luigi. That's fine. Although Final Fantasy was tempting only be only for the fact that um I could fucking ride a chocobo. True. Oh wait, no! Boom, Yoshi's world. There are no humans in Yoshi's world, so you assume humans are uh, just living life regularly. So there's no, I, my life doesn't change. <laughs> All right, we're we're way off topic. <laughs> not even close to the topic. Man, this is not the topic we were going to discuss. It was interesting I though. I, I enjoyed talking about this. Devin, do you real quick? Since Austin gave one and I gave one, do you have a in this? genre of thing which world would you live in uh movie verse ah okay movies 
any movie? Any movie verse. It doesn't matter. Well, I have a question. So, say there's a movie that is part of a book series. And they aren't going to make any more movies after the first to complete the book series. Can we assume that that movie series eventually does everything that the book series does? Just tell them no, Devin. I'm curious who his answer was, but I mean, for this hypothetical situation, I'm going to say yeah. All right. So the even if the movies don't continue past the first, they all. I'll say movie slash TV show. So there you go. But that's not books. <laughs> He's specifically asking books because oh, no, no, he wants no, no, to know. No. He wants to live in the I am number four m- m- multiverse. Yeah, that's fine. You can live in that. I don't... Sure, knock yourself out. Yeah, but you're a human, not a Lorian. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mark. No. 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 Oh, 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 oh! Shots fired, huh? Webby. <laughs> Sorry. You don't say that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is it's fucking Henry, listeners. All right, it's Henry, Henry. not not Henry. Fuck that guy. <laughs> um, god damn, movie verse, huh? Yep, movie verse or TV verse. That those are your options. Okay, I have a joke answer. I'm still working on a serious one. Oh, can I change my answer? No, I already know my real answer uh- now. All right, let me go for it. So my joke answer, Debbie does Dallas. <laughs> hey. uh, you don't live in Dallas, though, and your name's not Dallas. Uh, he used to. Right. You, you used to live in Texas, close enough. Yeah, I lived in, <laughs> DF- I lived in DFW. That's Dallas-Fort yeah. Worth area. Uh, my real answer would be, I guess, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So like you know Avengers or whatever I would be, I would hope to have some form of gifted powers. I have literally the best, the best answer. Aust- Austin would have flashlight hands. Yeah, but no, it's Ready Player One. Oh, that's a good one. I haven't that seen the movie one. yet. Me either. Me either. We need right. to so we can do a fucking review on it. I also need to see Black Panther so we can do Me a too. review on it. Me too. You all haven't seen Black Panther? No, I, no, I haven't. It might, it's up there. It might be my number Man, three top uh, Marvel movie. Man, you know what my favorite Marvel movie is? You want to you hear, you you hear it? David Hasselhoff? Nick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, my big thing with Black Panther right now is I'm sure it's a good movie. It's obviously doing very well in box offices and it's breaking records. Um, thing is, is everybody I talk to who have seen it has tried to hype it up so much that I just I'm they're just continuously yep. raising the bar so yeah, when I, I finally yep. do see it yep. I feel like it's going to be underwhelming versus what other people have tried to convince me that it is all right I'm not going to say any more good things about it then but yeah. I, Nick Nick Fury aging the shield boom there you go favorite Marvel movie of all time I'm, I'm kidding oh Jesus I'm surprised Austin didn't say uh, like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles so he could finally meet them. He he would kill Casey and just and just be the just be the new Casey. He'd be the, yeah he'd be the new Casey Jones. I was cutting out. What'd you guys say? I wouldn't be a Ninja <laughs> Turtles. No, I, I I said I was surprised that you didn't choose the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie so that way you could finally meet them. Well, have you all read Ready Player One? No. All right. Well, uh, I yes, a while ago when it first came out. But. Okay, dude, it so, took me two weeks to get through. I am number four, and that was an audio book. <laughs> I think Ready Player One, the audio book's longer. Man, it's gonna take even longer. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Awesome. <laughs> what are you, you? You got Ready Player One? No joke answer. I I had my serious answer that I just forget. Oh, here you go. So serious answer for me because eh, I don't know why, but for the, how I'm feeling at the moment. Gonna go with uh, Vampire Diaries or the originals, one of the two. The whole verse. Oh that. yeah, I forgot you said TV series too. Yep, there, yeah. Yeah, uh, never mind. I, I, actually, I changed my answer. Actually, then. no, no. I'm changing my answer too. Actually, to which verse I want to be in. Um, I'm gonna pick the uh, uh, what is it? The other world verse. The bitten. Uh, bitten. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take that. 
I that's would, my verse. That I mine would be tied. I would be happy with either Bitten or the original slash Vampire Diaries because that's the same world. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, it, it's, it's there. You know, it's, one's a CW show. It's not too bad. You know, yeah. It's not gonna. You know, you're not gonna like. You know, I, I would have... not want to be in Supernatural. Uh, this, well, if you're not a hunter, just so much shit goes on. Yeah. But I feel like, but I feel like you're oblivious to it. Like ninety percent of the time, you're just yep. like, whatever. Yep. Life goes on. So like there's that, and then uh, my joke answer. I had a joke answer. I can't remember what the fuck it was now. Hmm. I can't remember what it was. Oh, I gotta write that down before I forget it. The Battleship Universe is my joke answer. <laughs> Battleship the movie. Yeah. 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 Oh boy. My joke answer: Checkers the movie. There's giant checker pieces being played. Uh, he Make it not, happen, Hollywood. He is not here to answer, but I will answer for him. Uh, oh, Rob, though. We're, yep, Edquist, we're here, uh, yep. Edquist, if you're leaving this open for movies and or TV series, I think Edquist would want to live in either the Friends universe or the Star Trek universe. No, 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 no. I, nope. It would probably be. I don't know. I think there was a TV show, so it would count technically. It would be where he gets his name, the conf- um, uh, the confessors from. Uh, I would say, and he he's throwing shade on me, but I actually know him. You know, I I listen when you talk, Rob. Um, oh, man, it's from from a book. I'm trying to think, what's the book called? Yeah, but we're not really Sword calling out books. We're calling out truth. Sure. Oh no, but there was a TV show and it wasn't very good. Oh. But he would live in that verse, I'm sure, because I did say verse, I did say the universe. So I would yeah. say he would live in the sort of truth universe. I mean, fair enough. All right. So, moving on. We're already a half hour in. <laughs> Rick and Morty. Oh that would man, be fun. I've only seen a couple episodes. I've been meaning to start watching that. I haven't seen beginning. one. That's you right. haven't seen a single one? No. You need actually, to at least to... see the first one. Actually, my movie, I'm changing it. It's going to be Sea Biscuit. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. Not Spirit? <laughs> whatever. Spirit I mean, Away or whatever. What's the one with the zebra? What? Stripes. No, I don't know. Stripes was with Bill Murray. <laughs> Groundhog, Groundhog Day. Day. I want to be in Groundhog Day. <laughs> <laughs> I want to uh, be in uh, the Jack, and Story. Jack and Jill. Jack and Jill. Oh my god! <laughs> Any Adam Sandler movie? Oh no! Why the fuck not? I want to be in uh, what's the one where he played <clears throat> him and his sister, and they you were know, both real? Jack bad. and Jill. You know what? I'm uh, gonna, I'm going to do this real easy. In the video game world, I would live in the WoW universe, and I will live in the movie world. I will live in the World of Warcraft movie. <laughs> I just want to be a big orc, just a big fucking orc, swing this massive. I did not like around. that movie. I don't care. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I thought it was okay. a good movie. There was nothing wrong with that movie. It wasn't bad. It just wasn't. Good. It wasn't it was just, as captivating it, as it. It could, could have, have been. been more than yes, it was. I agree. I wonder I if they're agree. are they making sequels? They probably not. They have made enough overseas to justify making a sequel. I'm not sure if they will release it in the US because they did not justify making a sequel in <laughs> US dollars. But China, they made a fucking shit ton of movie over in like Asia and stuff. Or they made yeah. a shit ton of money on it. See, I didn't think it was bad enough to not get a sequel. Like I'm I just hoping that good. the sequel, if they do make a sequel, I'm really hoping that they put Torn in there. Yeah, so. that'd be tight. And Morgan. I mean, anyway. it was. It is technically the highest grossing video game adaptation of all time. And to give you an idea of what movie was we please, used to be that. Please, please, please tell please me say Mario. Do. Please tell Mario. Please say Mario. I, that movie is my guilty pleasure, but no, it was Prince of Persia the same time Dude, with Jake Gyllenhaal. Best, best, best fact about Mario, the guy, uh, I forget his name, uh, Bob Robert something. I just love the black woman with the boots for no reason. Like... I, now, I, you know the guy who actually played Mario? Uh-huh. Uh, he was drunk the entire time he filmed that movie. <laughs> I, I, I would, he, he would have to be. I would have to be, too. Yeah. Was it? That movie, that movie and Double Dragon are my two, are oh, my two favorite, shit. like, just go-to yes. bullshit you know, movies. You know what I hated about the Mario movie the most, though? What? So, in the video game, 
Goombas are these giant mushroom heads with little tiny feet. Right? In the movie, they're these humongous fucking bodies with little tiny heads. Yep. <laughs> uh, so, I would, uh... Yeah. Wasn't Luigi the main character in that? Fuck no. Uh, he wasn't the main character. He had he, more of a role than he needed to. Who the yeah. fuck played Luigi, though? Did he like? It, did he want to be like yeah. a famous That's, actor? Uh, like Wazamo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not John. Yeah, I was John like John. Yeah, John. Like John. John. How yeah. the fuck do you look like those man? Those roles you take, man. I yeah. Swear. First off, those two do not look like brothers. <laughs> no, I'm just saying that out there. I'm just throwing that out there. But yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, I guess it was better than Danny Wells, but you know, God rest his soul. But all right, Devin, we're gonna pitch the idea, and we're gonna remake a Mario movie. We're gonna try to do it right. I'm gonna be Mario. You can be Luigi. I'm, 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 I'm in. Okay. I'm in. And we'll pitch it. It'll be like, but, but he's white and he's black. They're, they're Italian brothers. It's and then like, that's no. when you slap them and you'd be like, that's racist. I don't see color. <laughs> I don't see color. I'll be Bowser. No, I'll, I'll be color. Toadstool. You're gonna be Princess Toadstool. Yes, I'll be Toadstool. Why is my voice connection been a fucking shit? God wow, damn it. calm down. We hear you. We, oh. hear, we, we heard you fine the <laughs> whole time. We heard you that whole time. Oh. <laughs> Never mind. Well, ah, well, I love that this isn't edited because that's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> He's like losing his shit. And they're like, why? That's okay. <laughs> oh, fuck. What episode was it? So people could go back and listen. It was the, uh, I want to say it was the Town of Salem episode. <laughs> if you guys want to go back. And I think it's on YouTube, so you can even fast forward through the Town of Salem episode. It was me and Edquist. We were recording about Town of Salem, obviously. Clay was on the call, but he was he was muted because he doesn't know anything about the game. But he wanted to be there and listen to us. Clay also doesn't know how you know we I, I play the exit music before we stop recording. So he thought yeah. as soon as I said uh, did my sign off, and then I was listening to the the exit music, he thought we were done recording, and he said something. A little kind of, I guess, profane, I guess. And uh, I just kind of <laughs> chuckled. And I provocative just, or profane? Uh, both. Well, provocative, I guess. Maybe is probably the profane better word. Profound. Yeah. Anyway, I just kind of let it, I chuckled, but I let it slide like I just wasn't paying attention to him until the recording ended. And then I was like, you know, we recorded that. He's like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was good. It's out there now forever for everyone to listen to. <laughs> anyway, we should probably get on tonight's talk. This is fucking weird. We're, we're, you know, we could just keep talking like this uh, and then do this episode another time. But I got really excited when I started talking about this with Austin. Yeah. So unless you guys have more stuff that you want to just randomly talk about, we will dive into what we can involving this topic now. I'm down. I'm down for whatever. I'll come up with something. Whoa, Devin. Me. Webby, yeah. I, I'm down for whatever, but somebody's ripping in your SU, man. Who? This, this dude on YouTube. Send me the link. Who the who the fuck? I mean, He's I'm, ripping. That's fine. Whatever. No. Yeah, it's fine with you. Guess what, motherfucker? Where are you? We're coming breaking legs. Where are, no you, legs? Where are you sending me the link at? I dropped it in the Discord, in the Discord chat. Under the Simply Unprofessional? That's you. Let's see here. Which, yeah, uh, he, he, he just uploaded a video 21 hours ago under under Simply Unprofessional. With one subscriber. Fuck out of here, one subscriber, dude. Inspire the Liars Dance Gavin Dance Mothership? Yes. Oh, so he's trying to steal the name is what you're saying. Yeah. Nope. Not ha- happen. And his music's not very good either. I'm going to have to leave negative yeah. feedback. Oh. No, nah, I'll let Austin take care of that. He's my uh, he's my on-scene taking Report care user. of... Webby, no, no. Person. Webby, no. First thing we're going to do, we're going to go find a lawyer. We're going to cut his head off. We're going to put a white wig on <laughs> Yes, yes, we've we've been over this. We will do this. 
Um, I'm going to report user for child endangerment. What? What? <laughs> about it. No, probably shouldn't go doing stuff like that. You should probably just... Um, Violent threats? No. Harassment cyber we are <laughs> We are recording this. Right. Uh, you Promise. could You could just write him or message them saying that this name is taken already and that they're going to have to respectfully change it. Or else. You can add that, I suppose. <laughs> he doesn't have anywhere I can write him. I'll figure this out. <laughs> or you can have John do it. All right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You, could, you could talk to John and see if there's something you could do about it. Anyway, that's not what we're here for, people. Yeah. Uh, Don't subscribe to him. So what I wanted to bring you guys on for was I wanted to talk a little bit about some DM topics. Not DM as in Distractions Media, but Dungeon Master topics for... Uh, tabletop games and what I mean by that is I found some like it, it It sparked with one singular question and then that kind of got me rolling into if there's other types of questions that are similar maybe you guys have some or have read some and, and generally how you would rule something like that now I'm going to start off with the one that I started off with Devin and I do tend to agree with Devin, but there I feel like there could be some form of a workaround as well. Um, and so, Austin, I'm going to pitch this question to you. Are you ready? Now I can't hear you. Yeah, I'm ready. All right, there you are. So your thoughts on – now let me finish this whole thing, but your thoughts on reskinning spells. <laughs> so – for instance, so I wouldn't listen to Clay. So, for instance, switching um, through name only, essentially, just flavor texting a fireball into, say, an ice blast, essentially keeping all of the mechanics of the damage the same, uh, but just changing the damage type. Now, the one main concern that I could possibly see moving forward is can this be taken advantage of? Um, i.e. players who know a lot of the monster's resistances, etc., could choose damage types that aren't commonly resisted. Hmm. Um, so, like, if there was somebody who said, oh, I want to be a sorcerer, but I want to be, like, flavor-texted as, like, an ice sorcerer, so I want to have, like, an icy or a cold um, connotation to pretty much all my spells... Uh, now that's well, fine flavor wise, but now you're taking like Devin brought up the fact that you know something like the majority of monsters in the monster manual are resistant to fire. So if you're taking the fireball and changing it to ice, you're changing the damage to cold. That's going to negate the resistance from yeah. those monsters. Yep. Or even further down the line, like because cold is the second most resisted, and then I think poison's the next one. And then you go down the line, and the two least resistant types is acid and force. So they're like, if I was going to do that as a player, I'd be like, I want to take as I, I am, I am literally a force or an acid mage. Everything I do is acid or force. Right. So you, you definitely, and then this spun off with, with me and Devin. This spun into a whole conversation about players abusing DM privileges and so like essentially, yes. you know, taking their DM taking for granted. Advantage. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And a very long conversation later. And, um, we, and we will get into some of this. We will get into so. some of it, but I'm, you know, my over my overall personal view is if long as the player if the player wants to make it you know, the example I used was if the player's playing a rogue or something and he doesn't want to use a dagger, he's like, I want to grow a tail and I have like a dagger point tail. But he's like, mechanically it functions like a dagger, Every, everything's the same, it just does that. Um, and then, you know, the, All right. that's a whole other rabbit hole. I'm not going to hold thing. on. I'm, I'm going gonna, gonna, gonna to pause you there because that's going to be the next thing I want. I want Austin's opinion on that. So we are going to get into that next. But I, I want his opinion on this reskinning of spells for flavor. So I have no problem with like reskinning spells for flavor when it doesn't change the mechanics. Like that's totally fine. As far as changing like damage types, um, if they're they're like I want to be like a a blizzard wizard or a frost wizard or something like that, and that's like the theme of their character, I'd probably let it 
let it happen. Like I'd, I'd work with them though. The, the biggest thing I can see as far as uh, changing damage types like that is some of the, some spells have you roll different based on the damage. So like if it's a, like a poison spell, you might roll constitution, like a constitution save to avoid it. But it, like for a fireball, you roll a deck save or something like that to get out of the way. Well, see, so, my opinion on this too, though, is if you have a sorcerer or a wizard or some, a spellcaster of some fashion, and they want to have that, they want to be that special snowflake, they want to be all cold, right? There are still a good, good number of spells that are cold spells. You have chill cold, touch, chill yeah. touch, uh, ray of frost, Ice knife. You know, um, blizzard is a spell. Cone of cold. You know, so yeah. they they could build their mage around these spells and then take the other ones as essentially utility spells. Mm -hmm. But I mean, uh, like, I, I don't know how I feel about changing the damage type of things. I'd more, I'd more recommend them go that way. But right. like, if they, if they, cause actually what I would do probably more than that is if they were going to, if they wanted a big ass ball of ice to fly towards somebody. I'd be like, okay, well, take this thing. It has the same amount of damage as a, a fireball, but it's ice based, and just say it's a big ass ball of like ray of frost. You could say is a ball of ice shooting at somebody. You know what I mean? Like so, you can reflavor your spells that you can get that are ice based to feel like. Um, right. See, I think this but... this was more for oh, I want to take all these cool fire spells and add those in with my cold spells and just flavor all of them as just cold damage. Right. But if that's the case, it, it, like, I don't want to sound like a dick DM. I, I I do like to think that I'm a very generous DM. Mm -hmm. And if 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 a mage say uh, Chris, okay, because he he rolled the sorcerer right in the distractions game. Uh, if he came to me and said, I want to be an ice sorcerer, I want, can we change all these to ice? I think my biggest, if, if I were to allow that, I would just go through and say, I might not even tell him, but I might just go through and everything that, you know, you guys fought that had a fire resistance now has a cold resistance. Yeah, that was going to be my other point. Is but see, then, can, see, this is my then, then it's detriment. Then it's then it's adding a challenge to the party, though. But because of extent, the one because character. now, well, to, but now you're changing the monsters. You're either right. making a monster more difficult by giving it another resistance mm -hmm. specifically that it didn't have, which increases the difficulty for the entire party, not just that one because that one player wanted to be a snowflake, right? Or you're making that monster weaker. Let's say four members of the party have fire damage and he does ice damage. You switch it just for him. Now the other four people are doing more damage. Um, like I think my solution was probably the best, and the solution I had was just that if you want to flavor text it as that, that's fine. So like I cast you know fireball, and instead of a fireball, you shoot out like an icicle that stabs some, like that stabs a dude, or you shoot like a ray of cold. You can describe that as that at the table, but understand that when the dice is rolled, that damage is still going to be rolled and dealt as fire. But see, that's you know, where we get into an issue where, especially us, where we run, like, we record these as a podcast, so anyone who does listen is going to then start commenting like, oh, that guy rolled an ice bolt, but I know this monster has resist to cold, but that monster apparently took full damage. Well, you don't, well, this is the thing, you know, I mean, to an extent, yes and no, because we don't really get into resistance too much in the show in terms of we don't openly state resistance too much no, in the show. No, 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 but resistant. some people like some people will just know themselves certain monsters out of the monster manual. Yeah, oh, and I and, think if you And like... that's fine. And that's fine. They can know, but I mean just understand I mean, I think I think that's more because then you're if you, you if you change that monster, they know, well wait a minute, that monster had fire resistance. Why is he you know now he's taking full damage of fire. It's the same thing. If you change that monster, it's the same thing. If you just change the flavor text of the table, but everything functions the exact same, the See, game functions regular pace. Me, I would probably be most inclined, final say, on my end, I'd be most inclined to say, you know what? Spellcasters have probably the biggest pool of choices to choose from amongst all their spells. If you want to be a cold sorcerer, 
take cold spells. If you don't want yeah. the fire spells, don't take the fire spells and take something else. But I, I, I'm I'm I I do not want to have to go through the additional headache of you, just because you want to be different. I'm not changing mechanics around for you. Right, and that's why I'm saying my my idea was. I don't like that, yeah, but I don't like the fact that okay, I'm shooting ice, but it really does fire damage because that's going to bring up a whole slew of problems. How the it just does. But no, because like I, if, I, if, I, if, I, if 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 I don't if I don't fucking memorize exactly which fire spells he does, but he's flavoring his ice, and he says I cast ice bolt, and he does fucking six damage. I'm gonna be like, okay, ice bolt, that's cold. This guy's resistant to cold. He takes half damage, and then I don't remember that. I haven't memorized all the fucking spells, so I'm not gonna memorize the fact that his snowflake power does really fire damage, even though it's a cold spell. So it should be doing full damage. Fuck that. Would, I'm not memorizing his spells because he wants to be different. You want to be a my, cold wizard? Take fucking Blizzard. Take Ray of Frost. I, I don't even think you have to do that. I don't. I, I'm, on my end, I don't think you have to do that. Like if like, and this is like you. I, I mean, it's a different dynamic to an extent when you're like you said, like on a podcast. It's a little bit of a different dynamic, but like at the table. You can just say I'm casting Fireball, but like if you want to, like how Austin when he does stuff in the game, he describes his eyes glowing green and things like that. There's really nothing on paper that says that happens. Mm. He, you know, he's making it more interesting through storytelling. And so me is, I feel like I'm limiting your your creativity as a DM. If you want to say I want to be a cold guy, or I want you know I want to have, or like if like if a player came to me and said, hey, you know what, I want to cast spells, but I want my guy to be different. He doesn't necessarily cast. His spells are all he writes them. He carves them into um, arrows and shoots them out, and then that activates the spell. You know, on on spells where it makes sense. It'll, like if he's yeah. shooting a fire bolt, he loads. He reaches in his pocket, pulls out like a fire bolt, and fires him out of a hand crossbow. And then the, the spell fire bolt erupts from the from the bow and shoots. Now, technically, if yeah, I mean, you, I could, I could go through the problem of making an item that actually did that, or I could just be like, all right, I mean, that's fine. Like you know. Un- just understand though, I mean, it's fundamentally it's the same thing. You're still gonna get the result end result of firebolt hitting or missing on the guy. It, it just gives him the creative control of saying, My wizard is my sorcerer is different than this sorcerer, this sorcerer, this sorcerer, and this sorcerer, and not just because by what's in front of me game. Well, see that's be- that's also where you run into okay, with your example that you just gave. The spellcaster who inscribes his spells onto arrows, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, now you have somebody who essentially he has, he ha- yeah, I understand that, but you essentially have somebody who, okay, say it's, say it's a cantrip. So he can do this as many times as he wants. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's just like he can cast a cantrip as many times. As right. He so he can do this as many times as he wants and he can inscribe this onto a bolt and shoot out of the thing. Okay. That's cool. Mm-hmm. How many arrows does he have? Now you have to run into that. But now see, you have to keep track see, of ammunition. Webby, Webby, no, you don't. Like, yes, you do. His ammunition is tied to his spells. He and then how is that? Then how is that fair? The the how is that fair for the ranger who does actually use ammunition and has to keep track of their ammunition? Webby, see, I think I think you're taking the flavor text and you're putting it into a game mechanic sense, which is what I'm That's saying. That's the thing. Like, you you have to. You you can't. You, you're, you don't. You're, you you're, don't al- you're altering the mechanics for one player. Where that mechanic might not matter Webby, if it's just flavored, Webby. but it I'm might really, it might matter really, to another player though. But I'm not altering the mechanic though. Let me ask you a question: If I roll a fireball and that fireball shoots from a crossbow or it shoots from my hand, the end result is one d10 damage, right? Based on my level, that's the fine. mechanic of that damage is not altering. It's just I'm not him talking saying, about that. Saying, though. You're talking about him pulling it out. Okay, well, look. You tell the player up front, and like I said, this could just be a, a product of the people that you run with, but you tell the player up front, like, okay, look, if you want to describe your attacks in that way, just understand that in the game world, in the game sense, fundamentally, you are a mage, and that's not how you cast spells. But if you want to describe that as a character, that's fine. I have no problem with that description. That's not going to take anything away from the ranger about ammunition and things like that, whatever. Like, oh, if he, you know, he gets five or uh, three uh, fifth level spells a day and he uses th- uh, three of his arrows well okay he uses three of the imaginary arrows that he has well he doesn't just you know well, he doesn't have any more on him or whatever you don't have to go that deep into it if he right. just wants to no okay but this is where my problem lies now 
if you're if you're saying okay, well, at the end of the day, he just replenishes his arrows. Whatever, it's fine. Okay, he has mm -hmm. those imaginary arrows. It's literally just for flavor. Mm -hmm. Now, as a DM, you may be put into the situation where another player comes to you and says, "How come he gets unlimited arrows and he doesn't have to pay for extras?" But you're making me buy arrows because his arrows are his spells. He gets those spells back regardless if they're arrows or not. He gets those spells back but at the end of the day. Do you see where that may be a problem for another player? I can see where a confused player might have a problem with that. But if you break it down and say, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you this question. He didn't have the arrow. The, he didn't have the imaginary arrows that he doesn't actually have. He didn't have those. At the end of the day, if he cast five fireballs at the end of the day, he still gets those five fireballs right. back at the end of the day. I understand it what you're saying, zero Devin. Difference. I get what you're saying. But it's the fact that this person wants to be this special snowflake and shoot it out of a crossbow. It's, I, I, I'm I don't, just very I don't see Hold on. I don't Pause see this real quick. That. Pause mm -hmm. this real quick. Put a pin in this. Austin, you were about to say something. What were you going to say? Um, would, okay, I have one question for, I guess, both of y'all real quick. Would you, um, would you ever create a spell for someone? So, like, let's just say that they wanted this, um, frost ball or something. Would you create a spell that was a frost, a frost ball for them? Would you let them, like, if they did all the work for it and made it up and you thought it was legit and it was, uh, it was cold damage. It rolled blah, 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 D8s or T D10s whenever successfully hit or failed save or whatever. Would you let that happen? No. I wouldn't. Only reason why is because when you create spells that wind up getting through in the game, usually go through months of playtesting. No, I'm, I'm not. For, of forget about all that. Forget about oh, all no, that. No, 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 it's no. I'm tell, no, I'm telling you why. But you don't know if it's balanced, and that's I'm my I'm saying problem. you do. I'm saying you know it's balanced. You just know 100%, no yes. matter what level, yes. level 1 through 20, the spell's balanced? Yes. You I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with it at that point. If it, if, if I know the spell is balanced, I don't necessarily have a problem with it. Um, you know, but I wouldn't necessarily encourage that. Because then you are no, in a, I get that. a game mechanic. In the, you're, you you're are introducing making another a game mechanic. if you do it every time. Yeah. But, yeah. So, but I'm just saying, like, for, for this one spell, would you? I mean, I, I'm not opposed to if somebody approaches me and wanting to introduce something that's homebrewed. So, now, with that being said, the spell that I show you is exactly like Fireball, except it's cold damage. Right. I, I feel like that's where that comes in. Like, it's it's no different than that, and it's um, and now I'm about to I'm about to go into the arrows discussion. Uh, okay. So oh, and another thing about the frost spell: if they wanted the fireball spell to be a, a cold spell because they have picked all other uh, of the frost spells that like maybe a wizard can have, and they were like, I've kind of made a theme here, and I want fireball because it's like mechanically a good spell and um, I I just like it that the only thing is that it doesn't fit my character because it's fire and not cold. I'll probably let the player reflavor it as cold. I was okay. It, thinking if on it's this, just that one. Thinking on that, I would go through and if this character approached me saying I want to be an ice wizard, whatever. Okay, I might allow him to change the damage types of his spells to cold, as long as he changed all of his damage types to cold. For every spell that he had, that was like an offensive spell or whatever. Like if he took fireball and wanted it to be ice ball or whatever. Yeah, that had like an elemental Now, field. Now you're, that is cold damage. So if you ever come across something like an ice giant, you're not going to tell me, mm -hmm. oh, I have fireball. Yeah. Because fireball is not in your arsenal anymore. Well, what I mean, I was, I, oh, once they took the frost thing or the fireball and wanted to reflavor it as frost, they can never get fireball. Unless yeah, they got it right. like via a magic item or something like that. But yeah, like it, I would only let him do it probably with one one um, thing, like with one spell. I wouldn't let him do it with 
like every spell they choose, they want it to be cold because it's, you know, the least resistant type. Like I wouldn't let them do that. But if they wanted a, a spell that was, uh, I mean, fireball is like iconic in D and D. So like, if, if that's something that they wanted to use and they're, they've already been building up to be a frost character, like, and that's what their background goes into all kinds of frost stuff. Then I'm, I'm going to say, yeah, that's fine with me for one. And I, but on the same end, if um, I'm I'm a player and I wanted that, and Webby says no, or he says yes with this condition, or Devin says you can keep it, uh, you can flavor it that way, but it still does fire damage. I'm going with whatever DM said, you know. Right. But now, as far as these arrow things go, I think that's like a cool idea, and I I wouldn't want to shoot it down. So what probably my solution to it is um. Like, so if, if I would make them role play going to get arrows, but I would not make them spend money on arrows that weren't actual arrows. So like, say they went and wanted to, they used five regular arrows and they wanted to go refill five arrows. I'd be like, okay, well, part of your role play is because of this, um, because of the, the choice you're making about flavoring role play that you're buying more arrows but that's fine like you don't have to spend the gold. I have a so, follow up question for Webby too. Okay, I also have a question. So I mean that's just what I would do. I would be like, okay, when you go in and you're going to role play, say you're going to get you need 5 arrows, say you're buying 20. And I would say the only the only thing is you like if a quiver, I don't know. I'd probably work some stuff in there as far as a quiver can hold 20 arrows, so if you have two quivers you can hold your regular arrows and then flavor that you have 20 arrows to use actually why not make the spell slots arrows that, that that's basically what i'm saying like he has you know his he has cantrips things like that that's what i was saying like so mechanically nothing changes i would do, i would do that just say he has uh however many spell slots he has he has that many arrows and maybe they have different color tips so like you can put spells on them that that's are... effectively what i was saying like he just yeah. inscribes the arrows with those with the spells he has for the day and then he's out he's out but i wouldn't necessarily you know be like i would just say yeah he you know he, he gets those back at the end of the day and it's I, I wouldn't make him spend unnecessary money just for no reason i mean granted at, when you get a higher level it really doesn't fucking matter it's yeah. what okay pennies on, it's pennies on the gold dollar but no, let me ask let you me... this question Webby, real quick okay um would you have the same issue if the player was like, you know what? Uh, basically, he just like I just want to hold my hand out when I cast a spell. The spell just takes the shape of a of a bolt or an arrow, and I drop it in my crossbow and shoot it. Would you have a problem with that? That would be fine with me. That honestly would be fine with me. Because now you're flavoring your actual magic, and then you're propelling your magic through that means. I legit have a problem with the whole inscription of a physical object because, all right, how are scrolls made? That's when you take a wizard and he inscribes his magic spell onto a scroll, infuses the magic with the paper, and then the next person who uses it can read it and use that thing. So scrolls are costly. That takes time. and they, they, You can get a lot of money for that. Also, a, a, a wizard, he has to buy a spell book to be able to inscribe his spells into his spell book. It, 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 everything, unless you go into a game and you as a DM tell your players, all right, all of your shit, all of your, your, your materials components, all of your, you know, spell book components, you will never have to worry about blank pages or, or any type of, you will always have room in your spell book. You have a 10,000 page spell book, so don't worry about room and that and whatever. If you're a ranger, don't worry about arrows. You never have to refill an arrow. Then, okay, do whatever you want. But if you're a DM where you specifically tell, oh, you have an archer in the group, keep track of your ammunition, you're going to have to refill at some point. Uh, you're a wizard. Okay, you started off with a spell book that only had six pages because. In D and D, it charges you per page on your spell book, so you have to actually go and buy pages, blank pages. I have a problem when there comes down to be a material component for certain classes. Then all of a sudden, you get like a sorcerer who comes along and he just wants to flavor this into him inscribing onto a very physical material component, 
and then saying, okay, well, it worked for him. He just, he etched his spell into the arrow, so the arrow is the magic thing. So what stops the archer from taking those arrows and using those and having the effect? But see, this is, see, this is where, I, I understand what you're saying, and I get it. But this is where, like, the clear distinction is made. That, like I described about earlier, I'm like, you need to, you know, the, the player needs to understand. Like, he can't make inscribe a bunch of items and hand them out like oh i can you're allowing me to do this so i'm gonna write right you know no, fireball I, on a spell and give it to i feel like the player the player asking to do this because you being the dm are saying okay that's fine we can flavor we can work with this we can flavor your character how you want i'm sure that he would approach you and he would ask before he did anything just to make sure it was okay you're the dm you're being nice enough to allow him to do this okay but it's a matter of how is everybody else at the table going to feel about it? You, as a DM, are in charge of all of them. You, I, know, I, I get that's that. That's the point. This, <laughs> I don't. Okay, I guess the point I'm saying is I don't want to sit at a table with somebody who either can't understand, like, or can't understand the fact that literally what's coming through. Hold on, one second. But I think that as far as that point what's goes, what's coming Webby? through, what he's doing is purely is pure. Role play, just like if that same player was like every time he he drew his weapon, um, he had runic tattoos that glowed because that was like an ancestral weapon, had no magical properties whatsoever, but it did that. I would be like, that's like me telling you you can't do that because you don't have magic runes in your body. It's the same thing. At the end of the day, what he's doing is only flavoring something that his class can yeah, already no, do. He's okay. flavoring it. Devin, I'm understanding so, what you're no, no, saying. I know you're understanding, but I'm talking about this other player who's up in arms about my art, you know, I gotta go to town and buy arrows because you're actually fucking shooting arrows. You're right. shooting arrows into somebody. No, no, like like we had this conversation earlier that it wasn't at, it wasn't nearly as intense as this one. <laughs> I literally feel like you guys are cornering me and like curb stomping me into the ground. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, like our conversation earlier, like Devin, you said because of who we have DM'd for we tend to have different DM styles. Right, exactly. exactly. Like, I've DM'd, so I've DM'd for certain people where they're very strict about, like, okay, well, we have this armor. It's not magical. It's just base armor, right? And then, oh, uh, your armor got, you know, a little torn up. Now they have, Now they feel like they have to go buy new armor. It's like, well, you know, in the DM guide, it says that, during downtime, like at night when you're getting ready for your long rest, the majority of the time an adventurer would know how to stitch his armor back up. Yeah, eventually you're going to run into an issue where like you got covered in acid, all your armor is gone. All right, now you might need new armor. That's different, okay? But like there is a thing for the, in, in the advance. So I am used to players who are very stingy on trying to make it for a fantasy game as realistic as possible. And it's Webby, like, Webby, well, all Webby. right. <laughs> you're talking you're talking to one of those players. You're talking to me. What do I always say? I like gritty realistic stuff. I love that. I love counting my arrows. I love like if I get hit, I want to know where I got hit and am I okay? You know, I love all that. That that's me. But I'm also saying I also understand and I also feel like that there's only 10 classes in the game. Yeah, there's different subtypes or hybrid yeah, classes in the game. I know. There's something like Anything, anything, this is, this is my personal take. Cause I don't get a, I don't get a lot of time to play in person, but this is how I feel. If you playing a character like this, if this is what you want your character to do, and that's going to help you show up to my table every week, because you're excited about your character. You're really excited about this concept. Go for it. As long as you understand that there is a <laughs> limit and all as the, all the players also understand there's a, any player that has an issue with that. I'll walk them through and say, let me ask you a question. If I took the arrows out of the question, I took the crossbow out of the question, and at the end of the day, he was casting those exact same, the, doing the exact same outcome, the exact same things. Every spell he cast, everything he cast, he just shot it out of his hand or out of a wand. Do you have an issue? No. Okay. That, now re add, in, re add in the crossbow. If he shot the spell out of a crossbow, do you have an issue? No. Okay. If he put that bolt in, in the crossbow and shot it out, you have an issue. Well, yes. Why? Because he's shooting arrows that I have to pay for. He gets them for free. Okay. But what is that? What is that arrow really doing? It's firing. But what is it firing? It's firing his spell. Okay. Right. The arrow is destroyed at that point in time. So let me so ask you a question. That's where in, I the, no longer have a eight, deal. Or like, right, I, right, I, right. I no longer have a right. problem with somebody. If you have a sorcerer with a crossbow 
And then oh, no. the I'm talking magic about, I'm, coalesces I'm, into an arrow. I'm to back to that. him, like I'm back to him inscribing. You know, I'm back to the the inscription. You add in, you add in the bow, and you add you have the crossbow. He just makes an arrow in his hand, and then or, or a bolt in his hand drops it and shoots it. You don't have a problem with that, right? No. Okay. Now this other this player has a problem with the fact that he takes an arrow out of a quiver, drops it in, that has in you know a pre-inscribed spell on it, or has spells inscribed on it, or whatever, and he fires it. And this th- this is my only thing. I'm this is what I'm going to say. Let me ask you this question. If I'm talking to this imaginary player, this is my this is my question. At the end of the day, when he pulls the trigger on that bow or he fires that bolt of fire out of his hand, mechanically, does anything change? Yes or no? Does the damage that is dealt, does anything change outside of what he is saying his character is doing? Does anything at the table change? And if he can honestly tell me, yes. This mechanically, this changes because you're increasing the distance of his spells. No, I'm not. He has the exact same distance on the spell. Because when that basically as the as that bolt leaves it, the bolt disintegrates and the spell shoots out. Okay. You can even say when he pulls the trigger, a magic circle appears in front of it and it shoots out. It doesn't really matter. Nothing at the end of the day, nothing on the damage table. He's not doing more damage than you than he if unless he already was doing more damage than you, regardless. None of that is changing. The only thing that's changing is He's excited about his character because that's his concept for his character that he gets to play. That's the only thing that's changing. And my only complaint to that ki- to that person would be this. If you have an issue with that, you maybe need to dig a little more creative deep and come up with something for your character. Come up with something for, or if you just if you just want to be, you know, playing Jane, that's fine. But I don't see why as a player, I, I'm not gonna look at another player and be like, well, I call bullshit on that. If he if it's literally just the flavoring of something else. Now, if I sat down and I went through it, because I think you create more problems when you sit down and you start statting out items and all this other stuff and statting out classes and races to give people stuff because then you're coming into an issue of, well, this is balanced now. Is this going to be balanced in 10 levels? And it's unfair to that player when you give him something and say, this is what we're doing. And then five levels later, you realize you fucked up and it's OP or it's super underpowered. So then you got to re down and then reset down and re and retweak it. I'd rather just say, okay, you know what? This is what you want to do. Let's do it. That's fine. I don't, and I don't, there's really no reason for a player to have a problem at the table from a creative standpoint because everybody has the same thing as an opinion. This is basically his character's opinion, the way he's expressing his character. There is no reason for anybody at the table to have an issue with that. Unless I'm allowing him mechanically. Now, if I was like, all right, yeah. If he's like, if he started telling me, well, I'm going to write down this spell and I'm going to pocket it. And then when I regain my spells, I still have that spell at the end of the day and all that other, like, no, no, you don't. You don't. That does not happen. You know, that, that's not the case. You, you know, spells don't stack. You can't spend five days of downtime inscribing fifth level spells. And then five days later, you have like 30 fifth level spells you can shoot. That's not how that works. We treat them as your spell slots. They're treated as your spell slots. You know, so if I was allowing that, I would understand that player. But from a purely just theater of the mind point of view, I have it, I, it. Nothing mechanically is changing. No damage across the table is changing. It is literally the way a character is envisioning his character and expressing his character. And I feel like me shooting him down, doing that, or trying to put limits on what he can do through through um you know stats and items just makes these more complicated like going back to that cold wizard if i could be like well i'll tell you what you have a family er you're you're coming from a long line of uh, you have a a long line of coal wizards you have a family heirloom like this you know this minor magical trinket that you have that turns all your spells cold you could describe that in game and that's fine but then you now you effectively just create a, a, a minor magical item but you effectively create an item that also you create another problem because now at any given time he could throw away that item in a combat if he's fighting a frost giant. Well, that's not going to work. He chucks it behind him, or he you know he drops it on the ground and now he has fireball again. So I'd rather not create an item or create a create a spell or create characters or create anything that has any tangible effect in the game and just let them let the theater of the mind go because I, I there's no harm there. There's no harm in the theater of the mind. Somebody may get butt hurt, but I'm sorry if you get butt hurt on somebody else's IP or somebody else's idea. You either need to get more creative, or you need to, you know, figure out what's wrong with you. 
as a if you can't wrap your head around. And now, see, that, it's that's different. why I'm more as far as like the I, the the flavoring of the the spells and stuff. See, the more we talk about it and stuff, I'm just more so prone to tell the person the spells are what they are. You're a sorcerer. You have access to those spells the way they are. Choose however you want. Uh, Period. As far as your... If you want to take fireball, it's going to be a fireball. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I agree. That's I don't how, think you should change you, spells. I, think, as a DM, if you I don't to... think you should change spells because, like I said, you create an issue down the road where it looks like it may be an issue. It may not be an issue right now, but you can't say three levels from now is it going to be an issue. That's why I like keep it theater of the mind. If you want to be different, like, and this is stem from the fact that I literally played in a couple of groups where it was, I played in an all sorcerer group one time. It was a special campaign, but it was weird because you, it was well, like yeah. real quick. Mm-hmm. I found the workaround for your stupid uh, for the for, for the stupid ice mage that we've all kind of created in our minds. Uh-huh. Like I'm picturing just like this like uh, this VV looking dude that's just all icicly. Uh, anyway, mm-hmm. ice mage wants fireball. Going along with what Devin said, but making it make some theatrical sense in my head. So he shoots this ball of ice. That just kind of grows from along the from point A to the monster, you know, it grows in size, and then as this giant ice ball moves towards, it starts getting this glow, and on, on impact, erupts in flames, like it is an ice ball, and then it ends up still being a fireball at the end, so you still do the fire damage. Bam. Yeah. There you go. Like everything I mean, that leaves your hand is ice, but then by the time it reaches the monster, it is what it is, pal. Magic missiles will always do force damage. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, oh, magic missiles is a different story. No, those are always force damage. Because they're auto hits. Like, you you can't have a damage, I think. Well, does anything vulnerable to force? No, it's one of the... That's why we're saying... That, that is one that of the least... Can't, that's yeah. one of the... That's why we're saying you can't, like just change spells willy-nilly like that right because if i if if i was playing a spellcaster the first thing i say is i'm a force spellcaster yep. all yep. my I'm spells a force are caster. force yep instead of instead of fire caster. instead of fireball i want this translucent just ball of force see i think that does those, 8d6 those, damage this stuff is completely different than though like a yeah, power this gamer is a completely uh, different scenario than what I would just brought up a second ago where a guy's just flavoring what he's doing. This is actually changing the game. It makes it a little different. No, you know, I'm talking it, about from for, changing from force to ice because, like, if somebody's changing to force damage, they obviously are doing it. Or not obviously, but if they just are like, I want all my stuff to do force damage because I'm power gaming. No, you can't do that. Well, if, actually, if I all mean, of your, if all of your stuff is go, if you go back and this person wrote, a five-page uh, backstory about how their whole family has been frost wizards, and nobody has ever been able to do this frost ball thing. And that's something that you want to give them because of their story. I, I for me as a DM, I would do that. All right, I would Austin, change me, it. All right, Austin, me as a player, uh, I come from a long line of telekinetics and psionics, um, and all, a lot of that stuff does force damage, but there's no, mm-hmm. there's not that in 5e, so I want to be a sorcerer, and can I just flavor everything I do? No, as not telekinetic? everything. Not everything, but if you have something like, if you want to build your thing a certain way, and you think you have this really cool idea for this one spell, but for it to fit for you, it has to d- be force damage, let's talk about it. Force like, ball. Let's talk about it. I conjure a Instead of fireball raining down from the sky, I conjure a giant glow orb concerned. of force in the center of the location that I clap my hands together. It does a concussive explosive wave that shoots out and covers the area the fireball will cover, doing the same damage, only it's force and a thousand times more effective because it's force. Okay, no, that's to- like whatever. Do if like I, if I talk if I approve that, then it's my right, job right. as a DM. At the, at the end of the day, at, and this was kind of the this is the point I was trying to make earlier. At the end of the day, it came down to basically me and Webby saying like, because every every time Webby brought up like a point, he would say like, I know players that would do it. And I was basically said it basically boils down to the people we DM'd for. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. like I know the people that I DM for that I as a couple off the top of my head, I could see that will try to milk and take advantage of that, and I literally just whack them over the head with the book, and they go, all right, I'm kidding. 
and like, they're done. I, I'm not going to lie. Some of you guys in distractions, in the distractions group, have approached me and wanted, and, and, and we've talked about unique ideas and or flavor twists on your characters. I haven't had a single fucking problem yet with any of you guys. Yeah, like me, me and you had a long conversation about yeah, that. Yeah, and I haven't had a problem. I have had problems with other groups, which is why I'm kind of, again, I'm a hesitant DM. Right. I want you to. Are. I want to allow things to happen, but at the same time, like I think Webby, about too many different you outcomes. Are, of you, no, no, you are very much. You're one of the most accommodating DMs that I know because there's a lot of DMs, even like myself. You're very. You, you like myself who like yeah, you can flavor it this way, but it's like sometimes flavoring doesn't just do it justified, right? And it's one of those things where it's like you are one of the few DMs that will legitimately want to sit down with a player and try to work out mechanically how we can make this work. Yeah. Right. You know, and, and that I love about you. Like, so, and that makes me as a player super happy. And like, I have zero problems approaching you with ideas. I go back to vampiric antichrist. Um, <laughs> I have no problems approaching you with ideas about stuff and you shoot me down uh thaumaturgy uh, uh transmutation you shoot me down um from time to time with hard nose but usually it's no but or mm, i don't like that per se but you, you always come back with a but and you always give some room to work with mm -hmm. you know and that's really cool like and, and that's what i think a, a good dm should do because the problem with art with rpging as a hobby is especially in real life, it's hard to get people. And the last thing I want to do is send somebody away from my table because they, they, they don't feel they can express themselves and play the character they want to play. Right. That's the last thing I want to do. So, you know, that's why I have zero problems introducing something into the game that's more thematic. You know, if it makes you excited about your character, then I'm excited about it. Just understand that if it comes to a point where it becomes a problem, we're going to have to address it. Right. Am I... My point to you, Webby, about the um, other player being worried that they're that one player's getting free arrows or something like that. See, like, and again, that's not a mechanic problem. That's an economic problem. Yeah, and the the economics is, I'm the DM. Let me worry about it. That's what that's right. what I would tell that player. You know, and, it's and like. See, but me, I, like, thinking back on this, like, having this conversation with you guys and stuff, honestly, I think unless the the player who wanted to inscribe these arrows was 100%, for whatever reason, demonically hellbent that this is the way it has to be, okay, I would say, how about this, okay, because everybody, like, spellcasters always have their 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 ways of acquiring their spells, you know, clerics, they pray, they get their spells, uh, druids, they commune with nature, they get their spells. Wizards, they have to sit down and memorize which spells they take for the day. Sorcerers just kind of wake up. Uh, <laughs> if they, it, you know, if you were a sorcerer and you were like, hey, I, I, I want to have these crossbows that I shoot my spells from. I'll be like, all right, we give you a special quiver. And when you wake up at the day, you know, at, at the start of the day, you choose which spells that you're taking for that day. And you have one arrow for each spell, essentially. Like, for all of your spell slots are now arrows, physical, magical arrows in these in this quiver that just magically pop up. Then you can go ahead and shoot your spells off. Okay? And then if he was like, no, I want to inscribe them and this, that, and the other thing, I, I honestly, as a demon, would be like, listen, dude, meet me halfway here. Okay? <laughs> I'm letting this happen. Just kind of go with it. <laughs> see, and you and see, and you give me ideas. Like you just gave me an idea. Like, and I guess this is a sidebar for players out there too. Like, wording. Uh, when you go to your DM, you know, if you want to go to your DM and you want to approach something that seems like a little, it could be out, out of place or OP wording. Because if it's completely flavor text in um, in fifth edition it's not really it's mentioned in all the spellcaster spots but it's, it's flavor text 100 percent outside of the only one has that has substantial is the cleric but all of them have a focus all of them so you mm -hmm. can be like hey you know That's what i was gonna say your you know what your i want i want this quiver and bow to be this quiver and you know this hand crossbow and quiver to be my focus so yeah yeah i you know since day one in mage school when, when we chose focus this stood out to me and i inscribe that so what happens is i you know i Basically, every morning I wake up, it's not, it's not like a bag of holding, but every morning I wake up, I get, I open it up, and there's arrows in here. 
now you could describe the arrows as being out of made out of like a gnarly black wood or whatever. It's like so whatever goes with your patron. You know, if you right. have a patron deity, you know, you can describe them. However, you whatever you get your spells from. You wake up and there in this woods in there, and you spend the extra five minutes in the morning inscribing. So you really want to inscribe. You get the arrows from, you know, from channeling your power into the spell before you go to, into this bag before you go to sleep. Right. You wake up. They're there. Now, when they're there, you inscribe. You inscribe them and everything else, and yeah, or you know, some you you have to pay, have it inscribed them, or. As you level up and you learn your spells, you inscribe those spells on on arrows. So you buy arrows one time. You inscribe those spells on arrows and you put them in the bag. And basically, the bag works to clone those spells for you. When you pick them, you pick your spells that night. You wake up in the morning, pick your spells, you open the bag, and your spells are there. Those arrows are there. But it effectively, it creates copies and clones that are single use magic spells, effectively. But they only operate out of your bow. You know that kind of thing. Right, and they still feed off of you as a magic cast. So I mean that that you know you could do it that way, but yeah, if you think, brought that up as like, a DM, that would work. I, I think, mean, my I think the only I think the only problem this 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 magic archer caster person uh, would run into is okay if this quiver and this crossbow is your focus, so that removes all material components for your spells as long as they don't have a gold value. So now, what if you run into a spell that does have a gold value? So like a diamond. So you need a diamond for this spell. And no, say you have no, no, say you no, have no. this diamond. Cool. Mm. Now yep. is that something that you would just nope. at the beginning of the day inscribe onto the arrow? It consumes the diamond. Now you have that spell. Either that, either that, or basically when you pull the spell you want out of your bag, like a sorcerer, for instance, they just know all their spells. They can just pick off their list whenever they freak they want to. Um, they just ba- you basically just take the components in your hand, drop them in the bag, and pull off the arrow. Basically, you you cash in your components for an arrow. You know, um, oh, I like that. I like that idea. You basically just like, take them, reach in your bag. Your quiver you is like a, a like a, a portal, component, like a, a component exchange. Yeah, exactly. Like just, I'm going to insert, like if you if you didn't have the focus, I'm going to insert some sulfur, some bat guano. Here is my fireball arrow. Thank you very much. <laughs> yep. I yep. like that. That's you, like, that's you just reach your hand in and you yeah. pull out and you pull out. An arrow, and then you shoot it. You know that would be really cool. Uh, that would be quick. A really cool we thing. we need to res somebody. Everybody, start pouring money into this quiver. <laughs> <laughs> we need we need ten thousand gold, people. I just like I just like <laughs> the idea that to res somebody with uh, a crossbow arrow, you literally are going to shoot, shoot them in the, the, the heart. Yep. Shoot, shoot them in the heart. Shoot. It's like an adrenaline Adjust. needle. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> I like this better already. It's Another great. thing, though, is that isn't like so at the beginning. Devin said. Um, if they make sense to be shot from an arrow, don't most of spells that go out like that, don't they just, they don't um, like consume the spell costs, right? For uh, like, what do you mean? You mean like, um, like, fire, like, like fireball. Trips and stuff, they don't consume. It, it, some spells do, some spells don't. Some spells consume, some spells don't. Right. And basically, how I would do it is if you basically, if it didn't consume it, you would just reach your hand in the bag showing you have them, you get your item and you pull them out and you can put your, and you can put your stuff back. Yeah. So, you know. but like, as far as consuming the diamonds and stuff like that, isn't I wouldn't make those go through arrows unless I mean unless they really like wanted. Well, no, that's what, that's but, what we're talking about. Like, you just yeah. literally drop them in a bag; they disappear into the abyss of your bag. Yeah. And then, which to anybody else in any other situation appears to be a regular ass bag. Right. There's you just this, disappear there's in this abyss solution, of a guys. bag, and then you we pull out your it. and then you pull out your arrow. Yeah. You know. And we there you go. And then, that's the thing is like Devin said. It's all about wording, okay? So if you have an idea and you and it's unique and you like it and you want it for your character, f- approach your DM with it and then tell him that it, it is important to your character for X reasons and try to word it the best you can and see if your DM will accommodate. All right, you know? see? All right, I'm going to go through an example of how not to do it uh, right now. Hey, Webby, I, you know, I really think Path of Transmutation for Roy is impertinent. And I mean, and it would, it would really show because there's not a lot of canines out there that really possess it. Yeah, there's it like really, one. It would really show that he is the, not only the student, but the best student of, of uh, Abraham, the one who, the one who possesses it. So I think that, you know, and he's performed impeccably well. I really think it would mean a world. It would be like the, 
creme de la crop, if you will, of appreciate showing appreciation if you gave Roy Path the transportation. Right, but see, uh, vampires, especially old ass ones, always keep their best secrets to themselves. This is true, but I, this would be the ultimate proof of uh, how much he trusts me, because that would show. I'm not saying he teaches me everything he knows, but it would show. It would definitely show. Oh, so you just want like the first dot of path of transmutation? I've said that numerous times. That's all yeah, I want. No, yes. not happening. See? <laughs> see, that's how it works. <laughs> just like that, guys. And remember that? See, you guys remember that whole thing I was just talking about with Webby, and like I was just talking about path like, of you transmutation know, does not exist except for one person. Yeah, it's like, remember that whole thing I was just talking him up about. I was just like, you know, Webby is so good with that. Like, you come to him with an idea, and he's like, no, but I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> dude. You sprouted that off, and I was like, you know, it really is. He's got a point. I mean, no, I'm not falling for this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously, like, you know, I, I just talked him up. It, it, I mean, it would be the ultimate. It would be like a passing of the torch, if you will. But, uh, yeah, uh, evidently, you know, I don't mean as much to him as I thought I did. Um, well, we seldom do, Devin. We seldom do. <laughs> this is a one-sided relationship. <laughs> <laughs> it's only with that one path. I already told you, man, you could take path of alchemy. You just got to have a lab. I just. See, if we could get him a lab. If we could forego that lab. Nope. I got a lab. Even if, like, got it, you need a lab. Even if we had a ritual. Modern Nights, like, you can have a mobile lab. How's that? I can't use a mobile lab in combat. That would be kind of. Okay. Yep. If I could. If That's I could. Because get, alchemy, like, alchemy is not a combat discipline. <laughs> you're right. It's not. <laughs> but I want to be Edward Elric. <laughs> Don't you understand? Oh, I want to be Edward it. Elric. I want to transmute people and things. And I, Man. I was willing to meet you halfway. I said I don't need the first dot, and it's not like I can go learn it from anybody else. It's not like oh, I get the first dot, haha. The hard part's out of the way. Now I go get somebody else to teach me. Yeah, Devin, like, I'll tell you what. You're pretty, you're, you're a pretty smooth talker. I can't right? do what I want to be. Yeah. All right, here we go. Now your only downfall when talking to me about this. Here's the boot in the ass. Is that I am the don't reason care. why this power. Is not allowed. Yes. So because you guys I've broken at home, it. What okay. you don't know is that, like, so between, excuse <sighs> Vamp specifically, between Webby and his friends, I can't have a lot of the nice things I want. There's two. Two whole break. fucking things. <laughs> no, okay. Yeah, never mind. There's a few. Anyway. <laughs> now, okay. Here's the situation, though. You can't have one discipline, one path of thaumaturgy because I played with it in a game that somebody DM'd for. And I broke it. Like I, I, we realized real quick that this path, very OP if used correctly, you know, um, through your imagination. Then my buddy Chris, I was DMing. He was a Ravnos, so he had chemistry. He fucking broke that power. I hate chemistry to the point where I no longer it doesn't exist. All fucking I, Ravnos died. It's I admit. Fun. I I admit if you abuse it and see this is what. See, I've kind of shot myself in the foot. I can't have nice things because of myself. Because mm -hmm. I've proven in the past that I can break characters. Dude, you could break a fucking tree branch off a tree and be OP with it. I I've proven in the past that I break can break glass. I've proven in the past that I can break characters and I have the potential to do it. I so, just don't do it because it's not fun. Now, but my original you know, hold on, my original stance for this, like I said, you're a pretty smooth talker. It's not gonna work on me because I originally broke the power. Okay, so I know how powerful it can be, regardless of what dot you want. Now I'm willing to sit down and talk with you and Edquist about a little side game as long as we both get the dot in it. <laughs> Uh, all of us. Well, I mean, character. we are, we are, we are of a bloodline, I suppose. It's a long <laughs> character. Uh, I do have a question, though, Levy. Since yeah. we, can't, we can't discuss this. This is back on the table for a time being. Uh, I will, I, I will permanently side table thaumaturgy if we can break the lore of the game. Okay. Can I get access to Mortalman? 
Yeah. <laughs> to, wait, what? <laughs> what is this? We have access to mortal magic. What is that? Like, oh, mage. you mean like mage magic? Yes. Who? Well, <laughs> systematically that doesn't work. I, I, uh, I don't... So we would have to break the entire game. <laughs> See, this is how this is how know. not to approach your DM very much, very precisely. Like, hey, I want to break the entire fragment of the game. Yeah. Hey, and... can I have this magic that it is stated that when Tremere took this magic because they had magic, they had mortal magic, but and then he... when they became vampires, they got cut off from that because of vampirism. It's true, true, true. And the whole point of the character I'm building with Roy is that he's 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 off, he's different, and because of that. To be fair, I'm probably like the second. I I am my by far my most hunted character. Um, probably the most uh, one of the second hunted character hunted characters. Like I mean, like Abraham than me. Like hold on, Devin, <laughs> watch this, listeners. You ready for this, Devin? Yes. How about we switch away from the vampire talk? And Abraham ironically knows somebody who's going to be in New York when Roy gets back. Who knows Path of Mercury? Spoilers. Path of Mercury. Pretty sure that's the path. That's the teleportation path, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. I just had an idea. That I told you in my world, there's only like two people who know that path. And Abraham doesn't even know it. That is true. You did do that. See, mm-hmm. so he comes up with that, but I like it. I so, like it. I mean, that's if we change the topic off of him. We can change the topic. Let's go. All right. <laughs> See that, listeners? <laughs> all right. I know. I um know what you all break the most. Hearts. What? Hearts. Hearts. You guys are heartbreakers. Well, we're right around that one thirty mark, but I have a couple extra little quick, hopefully quick, DM questions for you. Okay. For both of you. Okay. Here's one. Uh, do your players take your serious setting and make it unserious? Yes. Or vice yes. versa? Or neither? Can I answer this as a not GM? You can. And extend your answer. Uh, I'll be right back. Two seconds. Keep talking. The answer is yes. Um, there have been a few games where I've gone into them wanting a serious theme or wanting serious overtones to the game only to be immediately slapped in the face by the realization that none of the other players here want to. Can stay serious for long enough. Like, I, I get that too sometimes. Yes. Like, uh, But I feel like with our new vamp game, it's not... Well, our new vamp game that we're playing in with each other, me, you, Webby, and uh, Tamara, the, the one that Rob's doing, that that one has kind of stayed semi-serious. I mean, it's to an extent. Uh, yeah. it's, it's been more serious at times, than, and then it's been way less serious at times than it probably should be. Mm-hmm. But that's all good. It's all good. I'd probably say in, in turn of vamp, the most serious vamp game we have is the... Uh, Giovanni that we don't play very much of, which we need to play more of, by the way. Yeah, that is, oh, the three person, the three Yes, player. that is the most serious vamp game yeah. we have, and I kind of got a hate to play that game. Yeah. Um, because I'm in the mood for dark, grim dark, so. All right, I'm My back. life is shitty, people. <laughs> um, I and really need I just, drink, sorry. I, and I just want the experience shitty things happen to other people. Um, I mean, that's the reason why every DM makes a dark campaign. Yeah, I mean, it is. It very much is. Well, except for, I guess, Edquist. Edquist was going to make a dark campaign for us because I approached him, essentially, and said... Me and you both? I I was like, Edquist, will you please DM a vamp game for us so I can be a very twisted, evil, psychotic person and And just really break my chain and set me free? And, and now I'm a I'm a fucking tickle person. Like people tickle me, and I'm ticklish, and I'm a essentially. This is like if you took Home Alone, and you took the two burglars, and they had to babysit Kevin. Hey, what? 
they had to babysit Kevin and 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 a younger sibling. Um, yep. That's essentially what this campaign has actually really looking boiled back on to. that. You probably should have just died via arrow. That probably would better outcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Yep. Yeah, but I think the serious most serious vamp game we have. I was telling Austin was is probably the Giovanni Chronicle game that we need to play more of. That well, much see, serious across the board. It's true. That's probably the darkest one. Serious, maybe not so much. That is probably the darkest one. But yet again, Austin, <laughs> you son of a bitch. Yeah. You what? make it very hard. What did I do? DM. I made a fat guy? I made no. A... You made a mute. You made a fucking oh. child mute on an audio <laughs> podcast. Who likes to mutilate people and before we were vampires. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so much for being on Path of Humanity, you should have had you should have started at two. Webby, we discussed this with that he's not the normal. Like he's not normal. He's already right. seen I, stuff. I thought I thought we talked about like animals and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, but you're like already ready to dismember people. Well like, when that's you a do- whole separate thing. That's, Look, that, that is the progression of serial killers, but that usually takes a little while with serial killers. See, they start off as children dissecting animals, and then when they're adults, they're ready to dissect people. Well, yeah, but if you think about it, you, you dip your toe in the water, and then you want to get in. You know what I'm saying? So I dip my toe in with the animals. Well, I'll tell you what, Austin. As a DM, let's meet halfway. Okay. okay. We've just had Start this discussion. Talking. <laughs> I'll overlook the whole torturing and dismembering of people. And we'll work on your humanity, switching you to another path that will better resemble that. Yes. If your character fucking starts talking. Uh, mm, he will probably start talking. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, I don't know where I heard this. This just. Somebody whispered, you know, somebody told somebody who told somebody, and then I caught wind of it at the uh, snack stand that if your character doesn't start talking on this audio podcast, that he's probably going to die real fast. Now, see, I think I thought I did a good job of of playing him not talking. Maybe I didn't. But also, I feel like a lot of times in podcasts, I'm one of the... The you, louder people. You did very well at describing the dirty looks he gave people. Right. Unless he's not but, all mute. He's talked. Like, he talks when he needs to. He, I think he said, like, three things out of all the recordings we've done. Uh, he talks. He talked to uh, his brother, and he also talks when they, like, need him to talk. Like, if there's no other option, then he'll talk. I don't know. I remember torturing you, or I remember Clay torturing you, and and he. I mean, there wasn't well, even there wasn't even much screaming. There was just I like did, some well, grunts. Did, did, we, did we describe? I don't know if we even. Yeah, you were like, you were burnt. You were burnt real bad, like lots of aggravated damage. Did, did I say he doesn't make any sound? I don't remember. Yeah, you said he he like grunted. Oh well, I mean. You you should have been like, I, if I was you, I would have been like, no, he fucking yells and screams and is hurt. No, I don't know. I, You're yeah, probably I, right. I mean, it's neither here nor there. Yeah. But yeah, that is probably the darkest, more serious campaign that we've run. Edquist was supposed to be that way. <clears throat> Didn't happen. I'm, st- I'm, it, I'm still going to be twisted and demented, but... We'll see. I, I I do my best to try to still make it somewhat serious. And it, Austin, it doesn't matter if you're the most talkative person on each of the party. Sometimes we do need that. I yeah. mean, and to be yeah. fair, it is only a three-person podcast. Yeah. So even if you are talking, it you know you're and see, you're taking up forty or fifty percent. And see, the I thing mean, is, Austin, you weekend. you can't be the least talkative person because Devin is the least talkative person on all podcasts. I know. I'm trying to make. I'm That's trying to make you talk. Except, have, hold buddy. on, hold on. Except for simply unprofessional, he talks quite a bit. <laughs> 
And technically, I suppose, on the vamp, the actual vamp campaign, he talks more than Clay. Yeah, and he doesn't keep real quiet in the in the vamp campaign. I'm like, not, I, I every keep, other the only game. the only character that I'm okay okay all right if we're all gonna be dishing <laughs> shit out here <laughs> the only character I was quiet with was fucking Atticus for reasons um and then at the end there Atticus was talking he talked a lot he he said what he wanted to say yeah, at the sure. end there he went out on a high uh, note. I don't know if that's episodes out yet. Uh, that's fine. Oh. Um, <laughs> uh oh. I don't care. I'm not taking it out. <laughs> I mean, whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> that's why I, I went blah, 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 over it. So, we'll, yeah, you know what? Right, we're good. We're good. Anyway, point being is, you know, I talked. Uh, the only game where I'm really more quiet is Fate. And um, that's just. I'm dejected. Not me. <laughs> CJ is dejected. Like I just want to go home. I'm tired. I just uh, want to go home. I think it's partially you too. It might partially be me it's too. Fate. We, we, we all just want to go home. <laughs> Stabs at John again. Oh, shots fired. Uh, but yeah, no, there's really no other game where I'm like super quiet. Like, you know, like not not Zeta. really. I hated my yeah. character in Zeden. I, I was ready to die. Yeah. Um, I, but do I, you every, see why you're getting you're now getting hung with the noose of being the quiet one? Out of what three out of fifteen podcasts I'm on, I'm quiet. I don't it, think you're on fifteen podcasts. Would you like me to sit down and count them all? No. Yes. Nope. No. <laughs> the real it question might not here. Be 15, the, but it's the, damn close. The real question here. Would you guys rather spend two the, years no, in the, the military? The real question is here, since we're all passing blame. Webby, why don't you ever answer your own damn questions? Huh? What was the you question? You always you always come up with these with these big questions, and when it comes back around to you, you're just like, nope, I'm out. Next time. You never answer your own questions, and I think it's I think it's crap. Uh yeah, we've discussed this on our previous Simply Unprofessional. Well, we're rediscussing it now because damn it, you're not going to be the only one. <laughs> okay, what question <laughs> would you like me to answer? Um, how much do you, you... all all of it? Okay, follow up question: Who should be the original? Who should be the co-host? Can you pick a side, damn it, <laughs> Clay. Who should be the co-host? Out of me and Equus, who should be the co-host? Who should be the co-host? Well, Devin, you know you're my number two. You're my right hand man. So I Wait. Mean, the answer is technically you should be the co-host. Edquist has just been there more often than you lately. <laughs> it's not he's, my fault. He's like picking. sliding into that spot. He's it's not my like, fault you're picking two AM after magic in uh Town of Salem session. Actually it's actually it's eleven PM before Town of Salem and Magic Sessions. Well I was around. You said you'd be late and you could have met I was around. I, I wasn't on my computer, but I was around. I right. could have said something. Well I mean it's eleven o'clock at night. Sometimes you gotta wake up at four o'clock in the morning. I don't know. I don't know I your mean, schedule. Maybe but you know what? I'm dedicated. All God right. I mean uh, I'll I'm remember dedicated. that next time. You do it. All right. I don't I don't care if I gotta be up at two in the morning. I don't I don't need sleep. This this show is my life, Webby. If I if I didn't have SU, you probably wouldn't see it here for me. Well, I answered your question, Devin. You, you're my right hand man. You're my number two. You did. As far as SU concerned, you're my number two. I'm the. It's hand not that, my fault that when I go to close that I'm SU the hand door, that Webby usually touches himself. Yes. There we go. Yep. Yep. There I use go. Devin's hand. It's fine. Oh, uh, it's not my fault that when I go to close the SU door, Edquist jams his foot in the door and you know, wiggles on in. I mean, to be fair, he he seems to does that a lot. That's how he got in the podcast to begin with. I'm just saying. Oh <laughs> shit! <laughs> <laughs> I want to defend Edquist. I love him. I love Edquist too. I do too. He, yeah. he, he's great. I, know, but, I don't know why he uh, keeps taking jabs. I thought we put this behind us, but I mean, Edquist, my boy, he, man, he he keeps reopening these jabs. Edquist, so. hold on, hold on. I have to address this since I'm the host of Simply Unprofessional. Edquist, you know you're my number two. You're my left hand <laughs> man. Okay. Every every good man has two hands. Devin's my right hand man. You're my left hand man. Now I, I have a I have a question. What am I? 
because I don't necessarily remember. You're you're the fucking on scene investigator slash journalist. I'm your I'm your third hand. That's my dick. Oh, uh, so Austin and or Devin, you either of you can answer this because so, wait, I've wait. listened to this episode. Sidebar once. question: If Austin is Webby's dick, no, nope. mm-hmm. who fucks the horse? Austin. Does Webby. Austin fuck the horse? No, Webby he's not the, part I'm, of me. <laughs> Both. No, when SU is concerned, he's the on scene investigator, investigative journalist. Right, and I do a lot of horse shit on. <sighs> So Devin, so so, De- so Devin or Devin or Austin? I've only uh, listened. I've, on- I've only listened to this episode once. I need to know an answer to this. The okay. one SU when I did not have power, and you guys all recorded the SU for me. Right. Who took up the host mantle on that episode? Me. You did. I took the host mantle on that one, and Rob was co-host. Then you are number one co-host on this show. <gasps> Oh no! Oh, you no. took up the mantle as Edquist. 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 Your role on SU. No, your role can Ed be shut. can be renegotiated if and when I can't make another episode. If you take <laughs> up the host mantle over there, Devin. should be one a year. Where you don't make it, just one we year. Actually, we yeah. actually, we actually did that mock episode where you came back, and I was, and I, I was the, yeah, I, was the I took over, I took over the host position. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember that. And like me and next Rob, time, I gotta, I gotta channel my inner DC young fly. Bring that ass here, boy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, you ever heard of Chris Webby, Devin? Yeah, I heard. Did you hear Wait, his rap? Well, did play? you just say my name like fucking? In a weird oh, fucking Chris shit. Chris Webby. Chris Webby, the rapper. He, uh, I don't understand what the fuck you guys are switching my name in there, for. There's a rapper called Chris Webby. Yeah, right. His name is Christian Webster. Yeah, he, right. His name is Chris for Webby. He's on, he's on Sway in the morning. He, and he, he, he goes at little go pump. Mr. Nuts. Mr. S-U chat. S-U nuts. chat. S-U chat. Mr. Anyway, Walkway. Yeah, right. Lead me to the building. Fuck you. <laughs> I like seashells, sea hell, sea things. <laughs> can we just t- can we just title this Webby's nervous breakdown? Like this segment of Webby's. Nervous- <laughs> Who is this white funny? boy with That's the Chris Nintendo Webby. gun? That's Chris Webby. Yeah, He's so good, dude. You dude. know who's better than him? No, you motherfucking MC Chris. MC, he is. You know who's better than both of them? Gangsta Rob. I don't. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Shout out Goose. <laughs> <laughs> Love Gangs to Rub. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we'll. I mean, uh, did I have any other. I don't know if I have any other DM questions, little tiny ones for you guys. <sighs> well, I got to take this dog out. So. Oh, hold on. I do have one more DM question for you, too. Mm-hmm. As a DM. What's up? Mm hmm. When you pose a scenario for your players or whatever, what do you do while you wait for your players to do things? Like while they're trying to decide what the hell they're going to do, what do you do in that free time? Or do you just give 100% of your attention to the players while they're deciding what to do? Mm Mm-mm. Check text messages and email oh, shit. on Facebook. <laughs> no. I usually, when I'm doing that, I'm usually double prepping the encounter. Or if I threw out, I was, I was what I'm sure happened with you, Webby. Um, when I threw out, and I'm talking about the pre, the most recent session we just recorded. Uh, you throw out uh, like three jobs, and one job is particularly right up what the job you want them to go for. And the other two jobs are like, yeah, they're not really going to do these jobs. We all know what job they're going to take. And then they start showing interest in one of the other jobs. It's, oh, I need to write a new encounter. Um, yep. That's usually what's happening. Yep. And that happens. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I Not only do I try to account for, you know, rewriting an encounter or double checking a, 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 an encounter that I feel like they're going to get into shortly. Um, I try thinking ahead. Like, I'll start writing down lists 
of various names. Um, that way, when some douchebag player to some random ass douchebag NPC is like, "Hey, what's your name?" I can be like, "Fuck you, it's Steve." You know. Um, I, love, I love how Steve has like a, a like a hard Boston accent right there. Yep. <laughs> I, I love it. So that's what I usually do. And like, uh, I'm not going <laughs> to that fucking uh, business name that I gave you the, the, the other day. Um, mm-hmm. I, that was, I fucking made that shit up on the fly. Cause I fucking, I painted myself in the corner. I was like, all right, I know there's going to be a dude who owns this business, who wants this item. You guys got the item. So obviously you're going to go to the business. Fuck. I need a name for a business. <laughs> So I came with that one. I'm on the fly. I it sucks. And I hate it. And what was it? Vix, Vix, uh... Vix vestments. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it was stupid. It's just, it's just gonna like be it. Vix vapor up from now on. Yeah. We're going. We're going to vapor up. So, Let's go. How do I get this fucking weird white boy with the Nintendo gun? There it goes. I wanted to get it off my screen. <laughs> All right. So that was the last question I had for you. I answered that question. Are you happy, Devin? I you did. Okay. I'm super happy. I'm good. That's I'm glad. <laughs> so uh we're almost at the two hour mark. So we're gonna do our sign offs. So Devin, where can people find you on the actually, you know what? Not you yet. Austin. What? Where can people find you on the internet? Yeah, find me on the three hundred. Or fucking a horse. I don't understand anything he just We're said. We're on Sable Island. I don't understand anything he said. Don't worry, we gave you a pretty good shout out at the end of last night, uh, last week's episode. Um, Me? Yep. What did you do that for? Because they love you. No, I'll, I'll give the shout out again at the end of this episode. So your Twitter was what? At 300? At CZ of 300? Yeah, that's it. Is it of? Of. It's okay. I thought you at changed CZ it. Of. I did, but I changed it back. Oh, so it's, I it's got a bunch at, of shit at CZ of three hundred. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Devin, where can people find you on the internet? You guys can find me on Twitter at uh, DMP underscore Pookie and at Twitch on Twitch at Pookie Killed Me. And as always, you guys can follow me on Twitch at Jax Forest Walker, all one word. You guys can go to our Facebook at facebook.com slash simply unprofessional. And feel free to send us emails at simplyunprofessional at gmail.com. Um, we take all types of emails, people. Come on. Suggestions, topic ideas, comments, concerns. I mean, fucking horses for a living, Austin. That can't be healthy. No, and, I don't get paid uh, for it. Oh, all right. That's even worse. Uh, yeah, it's hate, a hobby. hate mail. If you want to send hate mail, eh, it's mail. I'll read it. <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. And, uh, as we said last week, make sure you guys send all those cool horse picks to at CZ of 300. Oh, God. Um, the weirder, it, the better. Okay? The thing is, you, you can't DM unless I follow you back. Like, they can't DM me unless they follow me. No, but can't they, post, can't they post you on tw- Can't they post things onto your Twitter? And tag you? Yeah, and yeah tag but the you? thing is, what I'm saying is my mom will see that. Because he's on Twitter. Well, hey, we're not telling we're not telling them to send you dick pics again like we did last week. This time <laughs> we're just telling them to send you weird horse pics. Make sure they're majestic. We d- <laughs> yeah. majestic horse dicks. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys want specific things that you should eat, you should send Austin. To- re-listen to the end of last week's episode. <laughs> That's all I'll <laughs> say. So and. <laughs> Thank you all for listening and joining us this evening. And as always, remember, fuck Booster Gold. Fuck Booster Gold. Fuck Booster Gold. Thank you.